Well, just as our previous economists suggested, if there is to be a turnaround in our ag economy, we'll need some help from Mother Nature. While the global economy may well fuel demand, Mother Nature is in control of supply. At this year's Rural Economic Outlook Conference, I sat down with Terry Barr, the Senior Director of Industry Research for the Knowledge Exchange Division of CoBank. If we are going to have a higher dollar, it is going to make our exports more expensive. What does that mean for commodity prices? I think for agriculture, the, the, the dollar obviously works against you. It, it keeps you less competitive in the global environment and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, the question really is going to become, do we make some of the needed production adjustments? And you know, you go back historically, we have, it's not like we haven't been here before. I mean, if you go back and look, in, in the 80s and mid-90s, we had similar type accumulations of inventory and so forth. And, and they were resolved a bit through a surge in demand or, uh, or particular uh, adjustments on the production side. Now, we had, if you go back in the 80s, we had... Different, very different interest very rates. Very different interest rates. But we also had, we had grain reserves in. We had acreage reduction programs. We had all kinds of of commodity programs that really were trying to control the supply, con control the surplus. We don't have any of those programs in place. Mm -hmm. Those programs have been, have been moved, moved aside and so forth. So <clears throat> as we go forward, that's going to be one of the questions I think that's going to be asked is, do we have the right set of farm programs for the environment that we're going to find ourselves in over the next decade? Because we always do farm programs on the basis of history. So when we do a farm bill, we typically look at what's happened over the last five years and we shape a farm bill. We're going to do a new farm bill in 2018. So it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how, what do we think the environment is that we're going to be preparing for? We have better crop insurance today than we had before. There's no doubt about that. Uh, we, have price, we have price protection policies. We have uh, revenue assurance programs. Uh, but are those the kind of programs that really lead to the adjustments that you want? Or are they the kinds of programs that just keep building your surpluses? So I th there's going to be a, a huge debate about you know, the next direction for the Farm Bill. Are we on the right track? And again, it's all going to kind of link into this fiscal policy thing. How much money is available mm -hmm. to do new programs? And how do we get the biggest bang for our buck? So that'll be a huge debate, I think, for agriculture for the commodity groups in terms of, well, what's, our, what's the best policies now for us, short-term, long-term? Uh, because we've got a, what I would consider a short-term problem. I really could make a case down the road, you know, two or three years from now, that we could have a breakout on the global economy. That, you know, that if we did these structural things in all these parts of the world, uh, we could have a really a massive amount of liquidation of liquidity moving into the global marketplace, creating jobs, creating demand, and so forth. And so, you know, I don't think you want to do a farm bill on the basis of, oh, well, we're going to just stay in this subdued environment. That's never happened. I mean, we're going to get this straightened out. We're going to deal with these issues and so forth. And we're going to find ourselves with, with I think, a, a renewed growth on the commodity side another super cycle, if you will. What's going to trigger it? I think opening markets. India, tremendous potential if you could open their market and so forth. Get China's restructuring completed. They get back on track as a consumer-driven economy. The best thing you could hear is China is a consumer-driven economy from the standpoint of the food side. Uh, so I think there's some, some real reasons to be optimistic out there a little bit, but we've got this this gap that we have to go through where we really kind of deal with the structural realities. And if we deal with those, then I think we open up this opportunity for, for kind of a new super, uh, super cycle on commodities. Uh, and, and I think it's out there. The question is how far out there do we move it by inaction? Do we keep kicking the can down the road? Uh, which pushes that, that reality further away uh, the longer we don't take action and so forth.